Good morning, guys. Welcome to class. Um, in today's class, we're going to be talking about food idioms. Okay, so yesterday, um, around this time, we had a similar class. We're going to continue on with this topic, and we're going to talk about idioms to do with food. Okay, so that's going to be the the, the aim. Chow is there. Yeah, uh, time. Nice to see you. Hi. How are you? How are you Good today, Chow? How are you? Cool. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, what have you been up to? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what have you been up to? So this means, what have you done since we last spoke? Uh, I, 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 I joined the other robotic class and do some, uh, some stuff about my major and some, uh, we um, learn some new things. Perfect, yes. cool. So verbing studying things like this cool okay so good to speak with you again chow um do you know of any food idioms food idiom i mean the about the food or yeah so using using uh words like uh, the name of a food in an expression to mean something else uh, I, I i can't come up with one but all right all right so that's what we're going to do today we're going to look at these um, things like a piece of cake, yeah, that's the, probably the most famous one. Uh, yes. Uh, or yeah, so that's what we're going to talk uh, about. I, today. I know one. You, 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 uh, I, I, uh, you can't have a cake and eat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So have your cake and eat it. Things like this, yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. Um, do you know any more? Now you, uh, you've had some examples. Do you know any more? I, I should know, but I can't. Uh, Remember, no worries at all. Okay, so I've got a resource. We can have a look. Um, it's it's quite good. This one, so I'm going to send send you this now, um, so you can open this. We're going to go through them um, now. Um, so things like, for example, yesterday we had some using apple, bacon, beans, and stuff. Now we're going to start off from cheese. Okay, so okay. Uh, if you scroll down, I'll share my screen so you know where where I am. We're going to go uh, to do with uh, talk about idioms to do. With Cheese, okay. Oh, could you put not... the link in the Google chat, Google chat because no I worries, can no see the opening chat. No worries. Just... Okay, thank you. Okay, and just to see in the uh, the chat box, we've got Sammy there, Ayad. Uh, we also have, yeah, Sammy and Ayad. Perfect. Good that you've joined. Hopefully, you can join in if you, if you want to. Okay, so that's cool. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with cheese because there's things like, for example, that's really cheesy. Yeah. Um. Do not. I mean, when I say, "Oh, that's really cheesy." Uh, cheesy. Uh, cheesy. To. Uh, I I can express it maybe. It's cheesy, yeah. So, for example, you could say, "80s pop music," um, is, is very cheesy. You listen to it and you think, yeah, ah, oh, this is so difficult to explain. But um, cheesy is kind of like it makes you go, ooh, yeah. So it like um, makes you cringe almost. Do you know this word, cringe? Not really. Cringe is to go like, yeah, like that, yeah. So uh, you cringe because it sounds like a bit, ooh, yeah. So cheesy, uh, you, it's a bit like cheeky as well. Cheesy. Uh, a cheesy chat up line. Okay, do you know what a chat up line is? A chat. Uh, no, could you put it a type it? I, I. Oh yeah, Google chat. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I yes, yes. Chat. So, chat up line is. Chat up line. Uh, I don't know. So a a chat up line is, for example, saying to. You meet a new, uh, you meet a girl in a bar or something, and you want to talk with her. You want to maybe date her. You would give a chat up line, for example. Uh, yeah. Um, I see. I don't know. I forgot my telephone number. Can 
I have I your see, telephone yes. number. Yeah, and that is cheesy because it's a bit. Yeah, so it's, it's a bit. Uh, it sounds a bit stupid. Yeah, it sounds a bit. Yes. Makes it I, like I'm not Jenny. Yep. Yeah, cool. Okay. So uh, Judith is there as well. Yes. Hi. Good to speak with you, Judith. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. And you? Perfect. Cool. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, do you know what uh, this means? Cheesy. If something's cheesy. Cheesy. I've heard about it. Something unpleasant, or um, it's kind of pleasant, but makes you feel a bit. Cr you cringe. You feel embarrassed at it. it it's not mm -hmm. quite. Yeah. So a cheesy chat up line would be when someone makes a comment to you. That's a bit, you know, mm -hmm. not very good. Yeah. But um, he means well, but you you think it's stupid. It's lame. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's principally what it means. Yeah. So, any questions? No question. Yep, so Sammy, cheesy, cheesy, perfect. Okay, let's go on in that case. Um, share my screen. Do you know any, Judith, uh, to do with food? Any idioms or any sayings to do with food? Not really. No or right. Okay, that's what we can discuss. I can't remember. Maybe if I read some, then. The apple of someone's eye, yes, I've heard about it. So we're going to go from cheese, okay? So can you see, uh, if you scroll down on, on my screen, you should be able to see, uh, just because we had some yesterday, okay. um, so we'll go from cheese, where it says, a big cheese. A big cheese, okay. You are the big cheese. Yeah, to be the big cheese is like uh, the, the major boss, yeah? The... the most important person, for example, the big cheese of the UK is the Prime Minister, David Cameron. He's the big cheese. <laughs> yeah? Um, okay. Something like that, yeah? So who's the big cheese of your country, Judith? The Prime Minister. Yeah, the Prime Minister, yeah? So that would be the big cheese. Yes. Perfect. And Chow, uh, the big cheese of your country. Uh, country. Of uh, your country, yeah, of China. Uh, the so-called president. The so-called president, yes. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, so the, that's the big cheese. Perfect. Tag read. Most people think in the UK uh, the, the queen is the big cheese, but she's not the big cheese, yeah? So she has very little power. Although I don't know if anyone saw, um, yesterday there was a big uh, a queen's speech. Um, and it's very, very traditional. And if... It, Every time foreigners would see something like this, they'll think it's always like this. But I'll just show you very, very quickly a picture. She had her crown. She was on a throne. Um, she looks like she was the big cheese, yeah? But one second. I'll just show you very, very quickly. Here we go, yeah? So she wore the crown and things like this. It was a big speech yesterday. But the speech was provided by the government. Um, so, it, so she's not the big cheese. It just made it look like the big cheese. Yeah, <laughs> but to be honest, this looks pretty cheese-like to me. Yeah, so big, <laughs> big cheese. But that's cool. Okay, so that that's that. Okay, uh, Tag Reed has joined us. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Perfect. Cool. Um, so we're talking about um, food idioms and food sayings. Do you know any offhand? Oh, one food what food saying? Any uh, about yeah. the, just about the evil uh, an evil a day keep you away from the doctor just like that. Uh, sorry. Yes. Sorry, sorry. What did you say? Do you want me to give you an idea about food? Yeah. Do you have one? Just uh, the idea of apple. Uh, apple. An apple, yes. Uh, an apple a day keeps you away from the doctor. Yeah, so an apple a day keeps the doctor away, yes. Keeps yeah. the doctor away. Uh, Judith, do you know this one? An apple a day yes. uh, keeps the doctor away. Okay. Oh. This one. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Yes, yes. I know. Perfect, cool. Okay, so it's quite a common one. Jose has joined us. Uh, 
Okay, we'll wait for it to load. But okay, who here is the big cheese or something? Is the big cheese maybe of, I don't know, in some particular area? Have we got any big cheeses? I wonder. <laughs> uh, Mira is the big cheese. <laughs> Mira, are you there? Yes. Okay, we'll wait for it to. Perfect. Mira is the big cheese of my classes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she always comes, yeah? So uh, now Judith is, is like the cheese as well, and Chow is becoming the cheese. That's cool. Okay, so uh, Mira, do you, do you understand this? Yes. Perfect, cool. Okay, uh, so the big cheese is like the boss. For example, the boss of the company, the boss of the country, just someone who's very important uh, in a high, high position, okay? Mm hmm. Do you like the big cheese chow? Not necessarily no. because you are generally, <laughs> generally speaking, do you like someone in a, a in a leadership position? I, 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 how to say? I respect for it, but I don't like it. But maybe he he has the power to be that position, but you know, too much. Central power is not a good thing. I prefer to um, distract the power. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's that's cool. Judith, what do you think about cheeses in general? Big cheeses. Okay. Do you like big cheeses? It depends on their behavior, their personality, I guess, how they keep contact with common people. Okay, and how do they usually behave, would you say, in your country, so the elite? I don't really like it. Okay, yeah, so uh, people don't usually like. Um, and what would you say, Miro? So uh, the big cheeses, so the, the big bosses of the big companies, the maybe politicians, these are all like big cheeses, okay, the big cheeses. How do they behave in your country, Miro? Are they popular? Excuse me? Are the big cheeses popular in your country? Maybe. You're thinking, Our three, president. You're thinking three camembert, <laughs> cheddar cheese, <laughs> no, no, Maybe okay, our, so. our president is the big cheese. He's the big cheese. Yeah, your president <laughs> will be the big cheese. Is the highest person. And do people like, do you like big cheese? The big cheeses, yeah. So not just the the, the lead of the country, but generally people in a very powerful position. Do you like this? I don't care if he's in a big uh, in a big position or not. I care about what he about his acting. Yeah, what they do. Yeah. So it's not about the position; it's about what they do. That's interesting. Yes. And Tagreed, what would you say to this? Uh, I, uh, most people who are big cheese, I think they are so bright. I can't deal with that kind of people. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's, it's difficult, yes, yeah? so this is interesting. Jose, can we hear you now? Jose? Okay, uh, just see my screen here in the top right hand corner. Uh, just. Try to unmute your microphone. That could be the, the problem. Okay. Uh, but anyway, we'll we'll come back. And action is there. Uh, yes, Martin. How are you? Not too bad. How are you today? Uh, I'm also not too bad, but I am. I am. Uh, I am ill. You're ill. Not so, okay. Not so much. I have a cold. What's up? So, oh, just it's a cold. Yeah. So, yeah. are you? So you can relax today, right? You don't have to do so much. You can relax. Yeah, yeah, I'm relaxing because in my country it's a, it's a holiday, so we are we are very comfortable. Today. Oh, is it in your country Man's Day? No, it's it's uh, it's a Triumph Day. It, we are the post-Soviet country, so it's the Triumph of Triumph of the Fascism. Okay, so today in Germany it's Man's Day, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, that's so, so it's it's all in Soviet countries uh, in Europe on the German, and it's also German. It's all day. 
Okay, yeah. is it? I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else celebrating Man's Day today, or something like this? I thought this was a good celebration. Man. So, there's a Women's Day as well. Yeah. So, there's a Man's Day. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, that's good. We'll have a Dog Day one day. Okay. So, anyway, um, or then a female Dog Day, then a male Dog. Okay. So, right. Let's go to the next one. So, Big Cheese. Jose, can we hear you now? No, okay, let's go to action. Um, what did you understand by the term a big cheese? Did you did you follow? Uh, yes, I followed uh, somewhere. So it, it means that an important person. Yeah, an important person, someone in, in a position of power. Perfect. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, uh, oh, this is good. Uh, they get on like chalk and cheese, for example. They get on like chalk and cheese. Or they are like chalk and cheese, yeah? So they're like chalk and cheese. Okay, they're like chalk and cheese. Uh, Mira, have you heard this before? Chalk and cheese? They're like chalk and cheese. No. How similar? Are chalk and cheese. Do you know what chalk is? To be against someone, something. Yeah, it's, it can, to be opposite. So, uh, well, chalk is not the same as cheese. I'll show you really, really quickly what chalk is. Um, who should be able to see this? Okay, so chalk is this kind of thing. Do you see that? That's chalk. Mm -hmm. Okay, and cheese, of course, you know what cheese is. So chalk and cheese are not similar. So if you say to someone, uh, if you compare two people, are they like chalk and cheese, meaning they're completely different. They're not the same at all. You c often this is used, for example, when you're talking about siblings, brothers and sisters. You could say, are oh, they like chalk and cheese, meaning, well, you know, they're, they're completely different from each other. They have different characters, different personalities. We and use... They even look uh, they yes, are yes. like sky and ground. In your language, sky yes. and ground. Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, so chalk and cheese, sky and ground. Um, Chow, do you say something like this in Chinese? We seem the the origin to Maria. It's different. Right. Like we said, like Maria said uh, in Egypt, it's different. Like the 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 distance between uh, sky and land. Okay, so it's the same, yeah? So, I don't know, mm -hmm. sky and ground. If you said that in English, it would make sense, but the common one is chalk and cheese, which is quite... quite I don't know who thought of this, yeah? So it's quite a, an odd one to think of. Why chalk, yeah? Why cheese? Okay, so, uh, tag read. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, did you understand this? And can you describe um, the relationship between two people um, who would be... who you could use this... where, where you could use this expression? Describe two people in what way? They are different, you mean? Yeah, two people who are like chalk and cheese. Uh, they have a different personality. They have different personalities. They are not uh, like each other. Uh, they have uh, always disagree uh, with each other. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so always disagree. They're like chalk and cheese. Um, who has brothers and sisters? Or a brother or a sister or... Whatever. Does anyone have any siblings? No, I have. Okay, action. Describe you and your... Is it a brother or a sister? Uh, so as a... In, in which manner? As a chalk and cheese or what? Yeah, so, so are you... Do you have a brother or brothers or do you have sisters? Or do you have I both? A brother and a sister. A brother and a sister, okay. Describe your character, your personality with them. So, are you the same? Okay. Uh, we are not the same, but we are not as a chalk and cheese. So, so we we are we have similarities more, I think. We're like chalky cheese, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, not chalk and cheese, not completely different, but kind of different, but the same. And yeah, okay, that's interesting. Cool. Okay. Yes. Uh, does anyone else have brothers and sisters? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Miro? Would you say that you get on like chalk and cheese, or? Uh, 
me is so emotional, but I can't control my emotion. And when I get angry, I uh, keep smiling. Uh, okay. And uh, have quiet somehow. But my sister, not my sister, when she get angry, she can shout and destroy anything beside her. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so in that case, you could use it. You could use it. Okay, so uh, you do, it looks like you've got a fan, I think, yes? Yeah? <laughs> cool. Okay, so. Um, all right, okay, so uh, Mira, yes, you can say chalk and cheese. Is if, for example, one person always wants to argue, uh, you want to argue, you would just always say, like, I oh, would like chalk and cheese. Um, right. Or, for example, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, I, I wonder, does this phrase mean uh, the two objects have the similar uh, appearance, but they are different in uh, inside, uh, inherent different? Uh, not necessarily. You can say it like this as well, but for example, um, I don't know if, I, I don't know, two, okay, you say you have a brother and you, you work or something, you, you're at work and then one day your brother comes into your work and you you say, oh yeah, boss, this is my brother. And he's like, what? This is not your brother. you like chalk and cheese. Meaning, I don't believe that you're related. Maybe you look different yeah? or you're different characters. So it can be about appearance as well. It's just about showing there's, there's a difference. Like chalk and cheese. But usually between people who have some kind of relation. <clears throat> so like a family or um, friends. Yes? Yeah? So you can be like chalk and cheese with your friend. You can be friends, but you are different. Yes, so it is not too uh, totally uh, uh, unrelated things or un irrelevant. Not really, yes. So, irrelevant things. Uh, well, you could say, for example, okay, me and the uh, you could say me and your political leader, whatever, or me and or you and your political leader, or me and my political leader, could be like chalk and cheese, meaning. The leader wants something for the country that you don't want. Yeah, it's like chalk and cheese. You, you don't get on, but there's still some kind of relationship there because they're both they're the leader of your country, maybe. Yeah, so uh, yes, I don't know. There's still some kind of connection. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's okay. Any more questions? Okay, what about, uh, I don't know, you can say about your boss as well, yeah? So we're like chalk and cheese. My boss wants this, my boss wants to reduce my salary, I want to increase my salary. That, that would be an example. We'd say, oh yeah, we're like, well, that's a difference of opinion, but it's usually, well, usually it's about character, yeah? So if that influenced his character, I don't know, if he wants to always save money and the worker always wants to spend money, the characters are like chalk and cheese, yeah? They're a bit different, things like this. Uh, can you give me an example, Tagreed, of a person you like chalk and cheese with? So, uh, usually it's brothers and sisters, things like, I, no, what about I'm, your parents? I am good with them, but I have uh, two twin sisters. Both of them like uh, chalk and cheese. Yeah, they're, they're twins, but they're still different. They're, the characters are different. Yes, characters and appearance and everything and ideas. Okay, that's interesting, yeah, and I've heard this a lot with twins, that although they're the same, essentially, they're born the same way, they look the same way, sometimes they're identical, they have different characters. That I remind me of a novel, The Sense and the Sensibility by Jenna Austen, the two yeah. girls, they are chalk and cheese. Have you read Jane Austen, Chow? Yes. In English? Yes, but it was... Edited by a uh, American uh, editor, so it it is simple than the original. I was uh, going to say yes. So um, we we didn't study Jane Austen actually at school, um, even though my school was very close to her house. Yes, yeah? so it was very big um, area for Jane Austen. Things like this, lots of tourists would come, take photos of her house and things like this. But we never studied Jane Austen once, yeah. So I find it quite interesting that, um, yeah, yeah, people. I, I think Jane Austen is quite a popular one to study, um, in Shakespeare things like that. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so I'd, I'd say that's quite difficult though to to read in English. But if it was a different version, right? Yes, it is a simple version of the book. Okay, that's cool. 
Um, Judith, have you ever read Jane Austen? Sense and Sensibility. Mm -hmm. Yes. In yes, English. Indeed. In English, yes. Was it okay? Yes, I like it. Perfect. Cool. Has anyone else read this book? No. Sense and Sensibility. Okay. I was going to say what it's like to read it in English. Yes. I don't know. Cool. Okay. So well. Um, and did you understand most of it? Yes, I did. Because I'm an English teacher, so it was a compulsory reading, but I didn't mind it at all. Okay, yes, that's okay. And do you, sorry, you teach this at um, school? No, no. I teach only elementary students, so okay. they don't need that level. But do they learn it? Do they learn it at school in your country, like uh, to read it in English, in their English classes, these kind of texts? Mm, at higher level, yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, interesting. Okay, so anyway, let's let's go on. So uh, that's chalk and cheese. Um, another bite at the cherry. Mm -hmm. Would I say that to cherry pick? Definitely, I would say. Yeah, to cherry pick. That is a common one, I'd say. To cherry pick. Has anyone heard of this? To to cherry pick. Cherry. Action. Do you know? Is it the same? No, as I'm afraid that, um, I don't know. No, it's pick, pick on yes. someone. It's to choose the best of the best. So, uh, for example, mm -hmm. if you you could right, you you work as me in human resources. You have a company. Uh, does anyone work at human resources? Because we could use someone as an example, or know of someone who works in the human resources department. That means they check the CVs and they hire and fire people. Yeah, they say you can work, you can't. Things like this, yeah? Does anyone know someone who works in like a human resources department? Yes. Uh, Mira, okay, so uh, how does it work? Do you know? Sometimes be fair, but sometimes a lot. <laughs> a lot of time it uh, be as um, an instrumentation. Yeah, it works as a cherry picking. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So this is a common example for cherry picking. You get a load of CVs on you. On, on maybe for example, mirror. Say, we say, okay, you are now a say, HR manager. Okay, lots of people would send their CVs to the company because, or Americans say resume. By the way, that's confusing. We this is my cousin. This is my someone I know. This is a neighbor, my neighbor. So, this is be unfair. Yeah, it's to cherry pick. You can. You, you're very selective, and also, for example, is to pick the best of the best. If you've got lots of CVs, you can afford then to not take everyone or not consider most people. You can say, well, you know, he studied there, he studied there. Oh, he's better. I'll take him. Even if he work. Yeah, it's just to choose the best of the best. Oh, he has uh, 50 years experience. He has six months experience. I'll take the 50 years experience. Although probably not now, yeah. So look, Martin, I don't care about the experience uh, because it's, um, maybe you can uh, when you put in uh, under pressure or put in this situation, you can um, uh, do your work. But uh, when you write, uh, uh, you have a lot of experience, but you are uh, the cousin of the manager, and you uh, uh, get it on the chair doing nothing. So yeah. why are you here? That happens a lot I'd say, in 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 London with like I don't know lawyer firms and things like this. Yeah. So uh, if you've got contacts, and that's networking. So well, it's officially called networking, but I don't know. Uh, you could say getting things maybe under the table. Yeah. But yeah, not so fair. Not so fair. You can get advantages because of your family, things like this. Yeah. So that that can happen. Um. Yeah. But to cherry pick is just to choose the best of the best of the best. <laughs> So if you have lots of people wanting something, you can just say, well, actually, mm, I'll take that one, I'll take that one, I'll take that one. Okay? So you don't choose all of them. You can choose the best ones. Okay? So uh, what did it say here? Uh, example, to choose only the best people. Yeah, yeah. So grammar schools often get accused of cherry-picking the best pupils. This happens. Um, so there's different schools in the UK. One, one's grammar schools, and they're... they're if they, the state schools often, they're not private schools, uh, but they're very selective in who can go into the school. Yeah? So they're thinking, hmm, I'll take this one. Yeah, they're, they cherry pick. 
private schools as well. If you go to a private school, an elitist private school, at Ca well, Cambridge University is not a private university, it's a state university, but Cambridge University would cherry pick. So lots of people want to, co to, go, to go to Cambridge or Oxford, so they know this, so they can take only the people with the best grades, with the, the, the best of the best students. They, they cherry pick. They mm -hmm. don't need to take students that are not the best. Mm -hmm. Because there are enough applying there. That's what it means, yeah? So, mm -hmm. okay, uh, how is it, yeah? So in your countries, Chow, tell me a, an organization or a school or a university that is so popular that the uh, people in charge cherry pick to a great extent. Yes, and and I think it is very common in our school's university when you want to get a master degree or submit your uh, your 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 document, your resume to the university, yep. and some university uh, would look would would uh, uh, look upon your own uni your own school student and discriminate the other school student and or some yeah. particular school student. Yeah, yes. so if you're just a normal student it's difficult, yeah, so to to get into certain universities, things like this, yeah. So you can cherry pick because of their good reputation, I guess. And they can they can do this, they can afford to do this. If no yes. one wanted to go there, they couldn't cherry pick. And, and sometimes it is not about your own ability. It is about your background, about your own uh, your previous university. So. Okay. So which university you went to before? Yeah, things like this. Okay. So your track record. Yes. Okay. That's interesting. Um, they they try to control it with Cambridge and Oxford because generally what happened before is that the people that go to Cambridge and Oxford maybe were more likely to have gone to private school and to have maybe richer parents just because uh, the parents maybe invested lots in, I don't know, private tutoring or something so they could get to this, this uh, university. But now um, it's more open to people from even poor families or whatever uh, because the, the government give them a quota. So they say, right, every year you must have at least 30% of people from uh, families with an income of below blah, 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 blah. Or you must have this many students from this part of the country. It's something like this. They give some kind of guidelines so there's little discrimination. But also, um, this could also be discriminating uh, if, for example, two people work hard or, or whatever, um, and they just choose someone because of maybe their family's background. Yeah. So uh, this person's family earned one thousand pounds more than this one. Okay, we'll, we'll take the lower one. Yeah, just to fill the quota. That that kind of thing. Yeah, it can be. Also discriminating, I guess. Yes, um, and I, I'm sorry. Yeah, please. I, I I think about my own experience when I went to my high school, and it is a, a good school in my <clears throat> town or something. And uh, but there are many students who want to go to that school, and the school claimed that they would run a lottery, and the the the, the students who Win the lottery would, would be in this school, but there are many under table things happening. Okay, under the, yeah, under the table, but Dr. Dilling, did you have sorry, did you have to pay for the lottery? Is it like you buy a scratch card or something? Yeah, so and I, I can't remember which, uh, no pay, but the it just goes into a hat. Yes, okay, yeah, so this is interesting, but the thing is, things like this, yeah, so I don't know if. Money could be involved in things like that. Yeah? So say, right, I'll go there if I pay you some money. I'm not sure. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so uh, any more comments on this? So to do with cherry picking. Okay, let's go on. So, uh, so that's uh, another bite of the cherry. I'm curious about this one. I haven't heard this so much, but Frank got another bite of the cherry when he. Okay, that would make sense. Um, just means another chance, I guess. Yeah. So. I, I don't really use that one, but you can learn it if you like. I guess it would be used. Um, okay, so cherry pick is, is popular. So, uh, what's cooking is also said. What's cooking is like, how are you? Like, I, for example, chow, I said at the beginning to you, what have you been up to? Yeah? And another way you could say this is, what's cooking? 
or how's tricks. This is a very northern way of saying it. Yeah. So how's tricks. So what's cooking? you would notice about this is the grammar's incorrect. So how's tricks? Tricks is plural, but it's how is tricks. Uh, it's because it's like from a northern place, yeah, with the dialect over there. But how's tricks is how are you? What's cooking? Or you can say what you uh that out. what's new, what's cooking? Okay. You wouldn't say Pasta, actually, or hmm, isn't that a fancy? <laughs> yeah, what, what's cooking is well, it depends on the context. So if you go around someone's house, they've invited you for dinner, and you go, "What's cooking?" Then you could say whatever, whatever you're cooking. But if you just meet in the street and they go, oh, "What's cooking?" That would just mean, "How are you?" Anything new? Can you update me on anything? Okay, Vincenzo, cool, you're here. Yes, you are talking about something like spaghetti or something else. I I heard. Yeah, then you joined in. That's why you joined in. Yeah, you had the word pasta, and you thought, yes, this yeah, is my class. I am arrived at the right moment in order to have a, a plate of spaghetti. You know, Vincenzo, uh, what's cooking? Yes, and, uh, today. How do you say minestrone? A uh, soup, soup. We say with, we, we say minestrone, but we say minestrone. Yeah? With zucchini and potatoes, something like that. Uh, zucchinis uh, in British English is courgette, yeah. So courgette. <laughs> yes. So today is very is a very light. It's a meal very light. It's a minestrone. <laughs> minestrone. How do you say the Italian? We say minestrone. Ma, no, minestrone. Ma, perhaps it's not the same in English. You you say soup, but it's generally no, uh, because we have a, a, a light uh, soup. That we call minestra, and a big one that we call minestrone. That's it. This one's minestrone in 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 the UK, yeah. But it's usually this looks too good. Our minestrone is like not like this. If I show you, for example, kappa soup. Yeah. Yeah. So you do you call it minestrone the same? No. Yeah. This ah, is minestrone, but usually it's served like instant stuff. Yeah, so very very quick thing. Uh, okay, that's how we serve it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so that's minestrone. I, I don't know how you say it in Italian, but minestrone or something. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so uh, Vincenzo, we're talking about food idioms. Okay, and um, the, one of the ones we just said was what's cooking. Uh, that means in in depending on the context, how are you? What is new? So if I say what's cooking, you say uh, not much. Yeah, so I. Uh, I still working at the same company. I kids are okay. Things like this. Yeah. What's so uh, excuse me. So you can say more precisely. Uh, how much are you? How, how many times are you cooking or not? Um, what's cook? How many times? I uh, don't know. What's cooking? What would be more like? Uh, what's what's cooking? How just how are you? What is new in your life? I would say. What is new in your life? Uh, to this question, you could answer things like, um, "Yeah, yeah, I've got, um, I've got a new job," or, oh, "Okay, uh, I, I'm just studying English." What's cooking? Um, same so, old, same okay, old. so this is, this is has nothing to do with cooking. No, nothing to do with this context. But if, for example, <laughs> we came around to your house, uh, which you invited us yesterday to do, um, mm -hmm. of course we'd ask you this question. Yeah. So, Vincenzo, what's cooking? As in, what can we eat that's Italian? Okay, that, that could be. Um, okay, come, come over. Are Martin. Yeah. Are these expression slang? Uh, What's cooking? Informal. It's more informal. You wouldn't more informal. again. You wouldn't meet the Queen saying what's cooking. Yeah. So, so what's cooking love. So we can say it uh, instead of uh, how are you doing. Yeah, because how are you is a boring question. Yeah. So <laughs> how are yeah. you? hello? How are you? Yeah. So usually. I would say things like what's up or what have you been up to or what's new or sometimes recently I would say this because I think it's cool. It's a northern expression, I'm not from the north, but I think that's cool. How's tricks? Yeah, that's that's a good one. Uh, that's fair. It's a very simple it's a very nice expression. How's tricks? I've never heard about it. It's it's kind of a northern one I think though, but yeah, I, I use that sometimes. How's tricks? 
and you say, yeah, yeah, everything's good. I won't, practice. I won't practice it. Yeah. Cool. Um, but the way Maria asked, uh, is this American English or British English? These ones, there's, I think there is some crossover. It's difficult to, to judge. I, I want to write it because uh, I don't want to, to, to lose this expression. I want to write it. How six? Okay. How Oh, By the way, Martin, good. when we uh, see uh, some instrumentation in any uh, governmental uh, institution, institution, uh, we said it is uh, uh, Zucchini. Zucchini. You mm -hmm. don't say. You don't say courgette. And uh, maybe mm -hmm. I don't know if it's different, but what I understand is, is courgette. So Zucchini is like. Wait, wait. Cor this is a courgette. You have it. Can you see? This is a courgette. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah, I have seen it. I think, I don't know if it's a French word or whatever, yeah? So, courgette? It sounds French. Yeah, it is. Here yeah, it is, okay. Okay, so mm. that's like a zucchini. But I yes, guess yes, something like this. Uh, anyone to ask you about uh, hiring in this uh, in government, uh, governmental institution, you said this is like this. Okay, so you, so you know so there are a lot of instru uh, instru uh, instrument, uh, uh, instrumentation in this uh, uh, place. Okay, yeah, so you'd say the uh, zucchini, yeah, this this one. But if you go to a supermarket, you go, can I have a zucchini? They're like, we what? say that in yeah. Arabic, kosa. Okay, yep. <laughs> I think, uh, I don't know, so now I, I, well, I've learned it recently, zucchini, I think they say in America, uh, but usually if you go into a shop or something, you ask, oh, can you show me the zucchinis? They maybe would look at you saying you speak English, yeah. So they're saying, is that Italian word or what? Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's quite interesting. And, and Maria, yeah. So it's difficult. To yep. Sorry. It's just to me, Martin. But, but zucchini has n has not the plural or not zucchini. Zucchini. Uh, I don't know. I don't say it. I never say zucchini or zucchini. But I, zucchini. I guess, is it po is it possible to I guess zucchini? You would say, no. I guess you would say zucchinis, but I don't. I've never heard this in the UK to describe this this vegetable. So I guess you would say plural zucchinis, but I'd say courgettes. Yeah, so courgettes. Uh, but Maria, that's a good point. Some of these expressions okay, will okay. be used in America. Some won't. It's difficult for me to judge. I'm just going from a British perspective. Yeah. So uh, from what I would say in the UK and. But there are some crossover. For example, cool as a cucumber, I would say is pretty similar. I, I guess they would say this in America. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, but yeah. So there would be some differences. Okay. So any questions? Cool. Okay. So that's a courgette or zucchini. Yeah. Zucchini sounds posher, I think. Yes. <laughs> okay. So. What are you going to cook today? Oh, what's I, your deal? No <laughs> I, think okay, I, I think I'll cook something like, what's cooking? I think schnitzel is cooking today, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to hiring to you know, any place uh, and they said to your friend, what's cooking? <laughs> what's cooking? Then you go, said zucchini. Zucchini, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, I can say it sounds very pop. <laughs> <laughs> In some restaurants, I can imagine them saying this because lots of restaurants want to use different words, and it sounds pro like uh, cream or zucchini or stuff like this. Yeah, I don't know. That's cool. Become good. Okay, zucchini. That's cool. Okay, so uh, to yeah, cherry pick, guys, I'm curious yes, about these. To cherry pick, I guess this would be used in America. Yeah, but I guess most of these would be used in America. But things like if using words like zucchini or courgette, there is there's some difference. Uh, there's a book that Abdullah recommended, if you're interested in the differences. Uh, it's divided by a common language, and this explains like the, some differences, because uh, there's a huge difference, well, there's not a huge difference, there's a bigger difference between American uh, and British English than there is between Australian English and uh, British English and New Zealand and South African and Canadian English is more similar than American English and British English, yeah? So, uh, but of course it's the same language. Anyway, okay, it's just interesting. So, uh, what's cooking? And then I said, as cool as a cucumber. As cool as a cucumber. As cool. As quite cool. Cucumber is a... Uh, cucumber. I don't know what 
But we need to do is uh, put a fan in your uh, on your heart. Sorry. Uh. We said the um, put a fan on your heart. Put a fan. Oh, yeah, cool yourself down. Okay. Yes. Cool. Get your fan. So, so it just means to be very very calm, to be really cool. Uh, for example, oh, got, if you say I've got an exam tomorrow. Uh, how are you doing? Ah, oh, yeah, uh, it's always all right. And then you're thinking, say, oh, you're as cool as a cucumber. Meaning so chilled out, so relaxed, there's no stress, you're not worried about anything. Or, cool. be, or make your uh, yeah, your head is uh, big, like the. Make yeah. your head big. Yes, yeah, so to make your head big, that would be, for example, if I was to say to you lots of things, good things, Mira, you're the best um, at English, you're the best uh, woman in the world, you're the best, blah, blah, blah. blah. Then that would make your head big, but as cool as a cucumber is kind of just um, very cool, very chilled out, very relaxed, not stressed. Uh, what did it say here? One second. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, to remain calm under pressure, although he was driving at 110 miles per hour, James Bond was as cool as a cucumber, meaning it didn't affect him at all. He was driving at 110 miles per hour, 150 kilometers maybe, or 160 kilometers per hour. He's as cool as a cucumber, he stayed relaxed. It didn't affect him. Yeah, he wasn't like, oh, I'm cool. driving so quickly. He was like, yeah, yeah, look at me, my apples and Martin. Yeah, that's yes. second. Okay? But why, why do people use this metaphor? Is there any special things about cucumber? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, so uh, okay. lots of idioms we say um, have n make no sense. There's no logic to it. But cucumber is quite a cool vegetable, yeah? So what it was, it's just, you know, long and green and, you know. <laughs> Um, if, you, if you if you like, okay. Excuse me, teacher. Um, my daughter is calling me for uh, for breakfast. I have to leave, no my, leave you now. <laughs> no worries. See you later. Thank Take you. care, Vincenzo. Okay. See, see you later. <laughs> okay. So as cool, I wonder what's cooking, but I'm not going to ask. Right. Okay. So uh, as cool as a cucumber, Mira. Are you as cool as a cucumber? Do you stay quite relaxed at things? Yes, a lot of time. I'm just to keep smiling. Yeah, nothing stresses you. You can be in any situation and you stick. For example, okay, if you, I don't know. Okay, well, I went to New York a couple of years ago, and for me, this was very, very stressful. I can boiling uh, uh, in in my inside, but I can't uh, uh, explain it too clearly uh, or uh, make my angry appear. Just to keep smiling to make me calm and maybe. Um, to make me um, have a good uh, decision in the situation, and after that, I can be angry. Okay, things like this, yeah. So you make a, keep a cool head, but usually things like airports and immigration can be very stressful, yeah. So has anyone experienced maybe going to another country and feeling stressed because I don't know, answering lots of questions, things like this. Um, or do you understand the situation? For, for example, I, this is the one that sp sprung to mind. Um, I went to New York a couple of years ago, and for me, it was very stressful going through the immigration process because uh, they, they took me to one room and I had to answer loads of questions, things like this. And I was trying to keep as cool as a cucumber, but it's quite stressful, yeah? So uh, you, you don't want to answer this in this kind of position. Or, for example, if you're preparing for an exam, yeah, this would also be um, a situation where you're trying to keep calm, you're trying to just learn the materials. But actually, you can't keep as cool as a cucumber. Yeah. So, uh, cool as a cucumber would be like, I've got an exam tomorrow. Who cares? Yeah. Or um, very relaxed. Just sit back and sunbathe. Yeah. Don't don't worry about things. Okay. A action. Did you understand this? To be as cool as a cucumber. Yes, I I understand. Okay. And would you describe yourself as this person, someone who's as cool as a cucumber? Yeah, yeah, in many times I'm as cool as a cucumber. Okay, so most most situations you're as cool as yeah, a cucumber. In, yeah, in most most situations I'm as cool as a cucumber. Okay, yeah, things like this. Okay, so yeah. uh, what situations wouldn't you be so cool? In what situations wouldn't you be so calm? So maybe uh, in exams, maybe for example, there are there are there may be some hard exams. So, I'm trying to be as cool as a cucumber, but it's really difficult. But in, in life situations, in many situations, uh, I, I differ myself from the others that I can, I can 
Mm, I can be as cool as a cuckoo. Okay, yes. Yeah, so exams not, but yeah, another situation maybe. So, uh, tag read. Are you as cool as a cucumber? No, I'm not. I am an angry person. I get uh, angry <laughs> so quickly. Okay, you get you get angry. You don't get stressed. You don't you don't worry so much. Yeah. So, what about in a situation like, for example, okay, exam, and then we'll say this going through immigration. They're being interviewed. Something like this. Would you keep calm under this situation? It's not that, for example, you get angry or whatever, but you, your heart no, no, no. doesn't beat. Things like this. No, no, I, I can't control myself. My in the exam, my my heart is beating all the time. I cannot feel relaxed. I always stress. Okay, that's, that's cool. So with the exam, uh, you can never keep as cool as a cucumber. Uh, Judith, what about you? I guess you have to be in your school, maybe. Yes, I have to be as cool as a cucumber, but there are situations when I only look like that. For example, when my boss wants to talk to me, but I don't have a clue what he's going to tell me, then it's quite stressful. And although I look like as cool as a cucumber, I am really excited and nervous. Okay, that's the thing. So usually with bosses, things like this, anytime you're under pressure being interviewed, for example, Chow, you have a meeting today, right? With, or you had a meeting today with the professor. Y yesterday. Yesterday already? Oh, yes. wait, because of the time difference. Wait. So yesterday, um, did you keep as cool as a cucumber? I, I, yes, I, I think I do. I did. And I was relaxed and... Um, I think if something I experience more than one time, or I, I get used to it, uh, a little bit nervous, or maybe not. I don't know. What did you so, talk about? Uh, I talk about how to uh, motivate students to uh, join the engage in the discussion and some something related to the course itself and and something like that. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, so it's good. It's worth worthwhile. Um, so you kept as cool as a cucumber, relatively speaking. Okay, cool. Let's go on to the next one, and that is a cowardly custard. I haven't heard this one again, but I'm curious now. And um, guys, do you know what custard is? This is very very popular in the UK, and um, we eat this. Is I don't. You probably you probably call it vanilla sauce, but it's not vanilla. Yeah. We have the same name. Like we use custard. Custard. Okay. So you should have I don't know uh, crumble and custard. Crumble. It's a popular dessert. It's like fruit crumble, something like this. And custard. Or I don't know. Ah, oh, the best one. Really quickly. Sorry. Just for my. These are. Uh, we eat this of maybe most desserts in the UK. Most warm desserts will be accompanied by custard. This this thing, so it's very very popular. In fact, I'm struggling to think. Okay, chocolate cake you wouldn't serve it with custard, but most warm desserts in the UK, pie, cake like this, uh, or crumbles things like this will be served with custard. So it's a very popular thing. Um, and we say, uh, well, according to this, a cowardly custard. I've never heard this, but it says, I'm scared of spiders. Don't don't be such a cowardly custard. I haven't used it, but I think it's cool, and I want to use it. Okay, so uh, you can choose whether or not you learn this one. I haven't heard it just yet, but I think it is very, very cool. So, cowardly custard, meaning as scared you're like scared as a custard. I don't know why it doesn't make sense, but uh, you said you look custard. like a rat. A rat. You look like a what? A rat. Mice. A rat. A rat. Okay, so you look like a rat. So a coward. Oh, scared. We can say things like scaredy cat, we can say other things, uh, but cowardly custard, and the same here because uh, maybe custard is yellow, so when you are scared, a rabbit. You, you go yellow. A rabbit, for example. Scared as a rabbit? Like a rabbit. <laughs> like a rabbit. No, no, if you do something like a rabbit, that means you um something else, yeah? So, um. For example, yeah, yeah, it's rude, yeah, but at it like rabbits is like something else, yeah, so be careful with that one. 
Um, okay, so. Uh, Get yellow next. like lemon, not like custard in Egypt, we said. So like a lemon, yeah, but I haven't heard this one, but I think it's it's cool. So uh, cow de custard, yeah, things like this. But you can be creative. I guess it's not an official one. But a bad egg is very common, and you'd hear this probably relatively a lot. Yeah, it, it depends. I hear this a lot. Uh, he's a bad egg. So for doing something, or well, she's a bad egg. So if your friend has betrayed you, you trusted your friend to do something, and then your friend betrayed you. You'd say, ah, oh, my friend's a bad egg. He's a bad egg. Meaning, uh, you buy a box of eggs. Does anyone know this? You, I think we talked about this before. Do you remember? I don't remember, but uh, here in Hungary, children use it. When they, they play chasing or something like that. And the last one is a bad egg. Okay, so when they're chasing... I hope you... I, I hope you repeat this lesson. Bye. No worries. Uh, we're going to continue with some more interviews and stuff. But I think there should be a recording somewhere if you want to go over them. But oh, he's gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, actually, so it just means a bad person. Someone with a bad character, a bad inside. Okay. So <laughs> okay. I was a bad egg. He betrayed me, or uh, oh, my boss is a bad egg. He stole. I don't know. Or he didn't pay me my salary or something we could say is a bad egg or at yeah. school. Is your boss a bad egg, Judith? No. No, he no, isn't. You're... So therefore you can say he's a good egg. He's got a good character. <laughs> he's uh, a good egg, yes. <laughs> if so you I... use this. So is there an idiom that a uh, good egg? Is there an egg? No, it's yeah, nothing good, to do that. Good, good egg. Yeah, I guess, for example, a well, bad egg, for example, from the outside, it looks okay. Yeah, but inside, you know, as soon as you cook it, you can see it. As soon as you open it, you can tell it smells bad or something. So as soon as you crack this person, you've really worked out what kind of person they are. You've cracked their shell, then you realize actually they are a bad person. So they can look good on the outside, but on the inside, uh, you, you don't know. And if you say good egg, it just means, yeah, it's a perfectly fine egg. This person's got a good character, good heart. So good egg. When we say bad egg, it means bad egg. It means that so we we expected it to be good or yeah yeah yeah. So but it's a bad it's a bad egg. But yeah, good egg is, is a normal thing. So we expected to be a good is also good. And it was good. Yep. So you think at the beginning that it was bad uh, that it was it was good. It looked fine. The shell looked fine. And then you break through it. You, this could be for example a friendship that even lasts ten years. Yeah. For, throughout ten years, you thought the friendship was good. And then afterwards, he does something, or she does something that uh, betrays yeah, yeah, his yeah. friendship. Then you realize actually they show they've shown their true colors. This is another way of saying it: yeah, to show sure. your true colors. Yeah. Have you heard this before, guys? To sh to show your true colors. So I understand it. Yeah, to show your true yeah. colors um, is actually your real character, your real personality. Yeah. You reveal that after a period of time. Yeah, so that would be a, a bad egg would have shown that he's actually a bad person. Okay, so uh, Rajan has joined us. Okay, we're running out of time, so I won't uh, continue. But uh, cool, uh, Tagri, describe a bad egg, please. That you know of. Bad egg is for a bad person. Yeah, Can you describe. You don't have to say names. You don't have to say relationship. Just describe. How you knew that? How you found out that they were a bad egg? Mm. Uh, I don't know. No worries. No worries. Uh, does anyone? Could anyone describe a bad egg? Ciao. I I don't know at the top of my head. Top of my, off the top of your head. You don't have the top of your head. Cool. Judith, do you know any bad eggs? Hmm. I try to think of one person no. who is a bad egg. Or, or just say generally speaking, what kind of things would a person do that would make them, cause them to be a bad egg? Who is unkind. Yep. So someone who, who is unkind. Has, who hates people. Who yep. 
do who do wrong, who does wrong, to, who hurts. Yeah, exactly. All these things. It says bad, egg, but at the beginning, maybe you thought, ah, oh, this is they're quite nice. Yeah, things like this. Okay, that's, that's, that's bad egg. Guys, we're running up time. We've run up time very, very quickly. But really good to speak with you as always. Um, and I've got some sessions later if you want to join in. Okay, so you're more than welcome to come back if, if you like. But take care and have a good day in any case. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.